Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Alex Tardy, meteorologist, National Weather Service. A lot to talk about here, including potential for some historic snowfall across Southern California. So all areas will be impacted. So we have purple level, the highest level extreme. Strong winds starting early Wednesday, low snow levels starting early Wednesday. Significant snowfall starting Wednesday, um, especially Wednesday night, Thursday, and then again Friday and Friday night. And last but not least, heavy rainfall. The most significant rainfall Friday and Friday night for our major urban areas. Okay, let's get to it. This is some of the impact we're going to see. Potential for trees down, really low elevation snow, a lot of snow to move around heavy wet snow below 4,000 feet, and then even urban and some river flooding. These are the key points. This is an unusual cold series of storms. It's not one storm, it's three. Starting tonight and Wednesday morning with the cold air arrives and the wind, then continuing Wednesday night and Thursday, then again Thursday night through Saturday. So this isn't a matter of if it'll rain or snow, but how much. High winds will be a problem, especially late tonight and Wednesday morning across the ocean and all the way to the desert and in between. We are looking at the potential for an atmospheric river starting Thursday night, but most likely moving through with some heavy rain Friday and Friday night. It's the coldest storm of the season for the temperatures and the snow levels. Heavy rainfall along the coast. Again, most of that will be Friday, Saturday. So wait for that with the atmospheric river. The low snow levels, though, will start early, as early as Wednesday morning and even continue Wednesday night and Thursday. Some wind damage with those strong wind gusts tonight and Wednesday morning. Certainly some large, rough, dangerous seas that will push some high surf locally over 10 feet up to the beaches. Some coastal flooding is expected as well with that with high tide. This is major snowfall. It's not too often that we talk about one to three feet of snow above 4,000 feet, let alone locally five feet. Um, this is also unusual to have an atmospheric river on top of all this cold air. Urban flooding is definitely potential Friday into Saturday. Now for the mud and rocks, debris, that could be anywhere, not just a burn scar. So please keep that in mind. Uh, with the melting snow, with the heavy rain Friday and Friday night, mud and rock debris flows could be anywhere. Okay, we have a lot of hazards in effect, high wind warnings and winter storm warnings. Those are up front the most important. The high winds and dangerous seas for the gale warnings uh, along the coast. We also could see some damaging wind to the San Diego coastline. Elsewhere, it will be windy but not as windy as the deserts or the coast. Now the mountains, you're gonna see everything. Lots of snow, initially high wind and a burst of snow tonight and Wednesday morning. And some of that snow will get down into the lower elevations between one and 2,000 feet and even accumulate. So a lot going on tonight through Saturday. Check back in, because those will change. A strong jet stream is to blame, like usual, but this one's coming directly from the north, like last week. Just like last week, except for this one is not a one punch, it's a one, two, three punch. With high winds, first coming in early Wednesday morning, okay, and then it quickly goes by, but then the cold air is here. Another system comes down the backside of the storm, L for low pressure, the upper atmosphere shown here. That'll come in Wednesday night. That'll put low elevation snow across Southern California, Wednesday night, Thursday. When we get into Thursday, that storm kicks out, okay? And the final number three storm, nearly as cold, comes down as well. This one's gonna take a little bit different path. It's expected to close off, so partially break away from the main polar jet stream. But when it does that, it sits off the California coast on Friday, draws in tropical moisture. So we got a little bit of everything setting up here, and yes, an atmospheric river for Friday. The storm is slow to leave, so we still see the shower part of the storm on Saturday. And even though the snow levels do recover a little bit on Friday, 
to between three and four thousand feet. They come back down again to three thousand feet on Saturday. Looks like we'll catch a break on Sunday and Monday, it appears. Okay, I talked about atmospheric river. This is going to be the big deal on Friday into Saturday. A slow moving atmospheric river pointed not in central northern California, southern California. Because the way the storm breaks off and draws in that moisture and takes its time swinging through. This is storm number three. What does that mean? That means the potential for rain is significant on Friday and Friday night. Here's a look at San Diego. On average, a projection of around two inches of rain. If it comes in a little bit slower, even more, as shown here. Not only San Diego, but spilling over into Palm Springs, this atmospheric river potentially means business, producing some heavy rain in parts of our western deserts in the Coachella and Borrego Valley. Okay, uh, the San Diego River will eventually be a problem, not in the short term, but when this atmospheric river arrives. And so will some of our other main rivers and certainly our urban and small streams. I wanted to show this because it's unusual to see something like this. So once the cold air comes in Wednesday, it doesn't go away. We're looking at freezing levels of 1,500 to 2,000 feet while precipitation is occurring Wednesday night and Thursday. It's quite remarkable to see something like this in Southern California. All right, unusual wind and unusual cold. So that's what we're gonna deal with first. Uh, the type of wind we don't see every year and as much as every 10 years. The type of cold, and we were talking about this last year and last week, cold temperatures but this is even colder than those storms. So five to as much as 10 years can go by without seeing something this windy, this cold. Take a look at this. This is a depiction of the heart of the storm Wednesday. So that's when the cold air is gonna be sitting right over us and it's not gonna to wanna to move. It's gonna get reinforced on Thursday and then more cold air comes in with atmospheric river on Friday. This cold air sets the stage for unprecedented snowfall. If you look at the extreme values, the wind's extreme on Wednesday morning, the cold's extreme from Wednesday all the way through Friday. The snowfall just as extreme. And it's not just our mountains, it's all the way from the lower elevation foothills up through the mountains where we could see unprecedented snowfall totals. Here's the wind. The wind's the problem tonight through Wednesday. We could see some damaging winds even on the coast. Okay, damaging winds even on the coast. The mountains and the deserts that are used to the wind, this is even strong wind for them. So that's you, Palm Springs, Borrego Springs, Ocotillo Wells. That is strong wind, Lucerne Valley, even for your area. The winds aren't just gonna be gusty, they're gonna be sustained strong. And so we're looking at early Wednesday, sustained winds across the ocean of around 40 miles per hour. Uh, sustained winds in the mountains and desert slopes of 40 to 50 miles per hour sustained. Even the orange shaded show some sustained winds across the valleys and coast of 30 miles per hour. That can cause damage. Okay, the first storm doesn't have a lot of precipitation, but it has a tremendous amount of wind and cold air. So rain and snowfall totals are insignificant, but we get snow in places that aren't used to it on Wednesday. So Wednesday into Thursday, we see some snow in low elevations like Anza, like in the valleys west of Borrego, like we saw last week. So we see unusual snow in the Cajon Pass. So unusual snow in parts of the Inland Empire foothills. That's because we have really cold air in place and precipitation moving over the top of it Wednesday night and Thursday. So the cold front comes through early Wednesday morning, then additional precipitation Wednesday night. Temperatures aren't really gonna go anywhere. I said cold air, you're not gonna get out of the 20s in the mountains. You're not gonna get out of the 40s in the inland valleys. And that will be briefly in between storm one and two on Wednesday. 
Now, when you look at the storm combined, the next storm, number two and three, from Thursday, remember I said precipitation comes back Wednesday night and is widespread Thursday? Well, the atmospheric river doesn't arrive until Friday and then moves through early Saturday. So when you combine storm two and three, big numbers of rain along the coast. Most coastal areas should see two to three inches of water. Um, the mountain areas even more, which would be all snow. And notice the spillover into the deserts, high and low. The snowfall projections are borderline astronomical. Um, our mountain communities, such as Big Bear, Wrightwood, Idlewild, don't usually see snow more than two or three feet. It's very rare. Uh, the same is said for Palomar, Mount Laguna, Julian. We don't usually see snow predicted or even occurring at these levels. So this is not set in stone. This will change. You could easily see more snowfall in Inland Empire than shown here, even though it does project one to four inches. You could see more snow in the high deserts. Um, and some of these peak values might be confined to the most favored slopes like Running Springs and Green Valley Lake. But nonetheless, we're talking feet of snow. Uh, what does it compare to? We had a big storm back in December 2014. We had uh, a major wind event in January 2016, a lot of damage in San Diego. We had a major atmospheric river and cold storm that produced a few feet of snow in Big Bear and other places in 2017. Then we had uh, what followed the Valentine's Day storm, which was bad enough. Then we had really cold, low snow levels in February 2019. So we've seen storms that were all a little bit different, but comparable in some regards. Across California, if San Diego's getting two or three inches of rain, then the north must be getting twice as much. That's not the case because the storm is coming directly from the north, turning the corner. Storm one, two, and three especially targeting Southern California. Zoomed up view shows those big amounts that are projected, even spilling over in the deserts of precipitation. So a lot of this is snow. The hazards are real. Uh, so on Wednesday, when the cold air arrives, the seas, the coastal surf, the high winds, extreme along the coast. Some of the wind speeds we see even touching the coast and over the mountains and deserts also significant to extreme. That's just with storm number one, the cold front. Now, uh, with the snow and the cold air in place and more precipitation, we're going to see unusual low snow levels Wednesday night through Thursday night. When the atmospheric river arrives on Friday, the snow levels will rise, but still probably not go above 4,000 feet. And that's what's going to enable potentially the feet of snow above 4,000 feet. Okay, there's also a risk for heavy rain, as mentioned. This is our coastal and valley areas. When the warmer air comes in, the atmospheric river comes in Friday and Friday night. A risk for excessive rainfall in our coastal areas and our inland valleys. That's what will lead to some urban flooding, some of the rock slides, and also potential for river flooding. Do we catch a break? Um, the latest information is shown here. This is just issued um, a lot like what we saw a week ago. There is the projection again for another polar type storm setting up on the west coast affecting all of California, including SoCal, as shown here with below normal temperatures and above average precipitation. This is for the first week of March. Okay, the key points are up here for you to digest. Take a look at those. Um, pause the video, see what's impact for your area, whether it's wind, unusual snow amounts or low snow levels, or just plain rain, or even the coastal surf. Make sure you follow the weather on weather.gov. That's where the latest information will be posted. Nowhere else is it posted that quick. It'll go right to weather.gov, whether it's a urgent message or a message telling you it's coming in a day or two like we're doing now. Stay safe, everyone, um, and adhere to all the road closures, all the warning signs, the change restrictions, and all the information that will likely be posted on messaging and signboards as we go through this week. We'll touch back in later in the week.